So when is the Coriolis force important? And scientists have figured out that this depends on a physical quantity called the Rossby number. And the Rossby number, again, named after a gentleman, a Swedish fella by the name Carl Gustav Arvid Rossby, who lived in the 20th century. So we're getting closer to modern day science here. And early 20th century, little hair, no beard, suit jacket, and tie. So what Rossby realized was that the ratio of an object's speed and its length scale over which it takes place, the phenomenon, is really important in determining whether the Coriolis force matters or not. And so the Rossby number is defined to scale as u over l. And to be precise, the Rossby number is defined as u over l times f, where f is known as the Coriolis frequency. But I want to focus on u and l, because in middle latitudes, if you stay at the same latitude, f is constant. f only depends on the latitude you're on. So the Coriolis effect is important when the Rossby number is really small, when RO is much less than 1. And it doesn't really matter when RO is much bigger than 1. For example, if we have a hurricane which travels at about 10 meters per second, 22 miles per hour, and has a size of a thousand kilometers, the Rossby number is approximately 0 0.1. So it is small and Coriolis matters. On the other hand, if you consider a baseball pitch, U velocity is around 45 meters per second or 100 miles per hour and the distance is just 18.3 meters 60 feet and the Rossby number becomes of the order of 32,000 so in this case Coriolis doesn't matter. So in summary, Coriolis is important the larger the length scale and the slower the object moves. So from my research on ice, I know, for example, that giant icebergs that travel over years in the Southern Ocean are very strongly impacted by the Coriolis effect because they travel slowly and they are very large.